Hello everyone, BLB here, and welcome back for another Minecraft tutorial. And today we are building a flying machine powered dripstone farm. I'm going to go ahead and trigger these flying machines. As you can see, it just kind of sweeps across. This is, well, in my opinion, the best way to farm dripstone. Sure, you can grow it in these singular rows like we did the old uh, sugarcane farms, but this stuff just grows so slowly. You want to be growing a large amount of it at a time and be able to harvest it very quickly and this makes it possible to do so and in case you couldn't tell what was going on there the machines are just coming by the top machine breaks all the the stalactites and the bottom machine bre breaks all the stalagmites and the bottom machine also has these little blocks on the bottom which kind of sweep everything off one side or the other and then they fall into these little water canals which feed into our hopper streams which come into these double chests and you got chests on both sides of this thing uh most of it seems to come off the far side you know from where the machines are launched of course because you get the most of the harvest on the first sweep but you get a few on the back sweep uh, another thing is this thing is well, pretty much infinitely expandable. You can make it as long as you want. Uh, you're kind of restricted to eight blocks wide uh, just due to the limitations of the machine. But, uh, yeah, you could make this as far as your simulation distance travels. As long as you don't leave the area while the machines are in flight, it'll still work. And the materials required for this build are going to be 16 sticky pistons, 7 redstone repeaters, 4 blocks of obsidian, 16 honey blocks yes you could substitute slime blocks instead but i highly recommend honey simply because slime tends to fling things way out of the farm while honey just kind of drops it below uh you're going to need about 20 dashes of redstone dust six observers uh a button to just to trigger the machine sometimes i actually use like target blocks for this sort of thing any sort of redstone output that just gives a you know a, a pulse will do uh, and then you're going to need uh, 18 hoppers and well at least two chests for collection I'm gonna put double chests in both ends of this thing so I'm using four but two would actually probably be enough uh, you're also gonna need a whole bunch of building blocks these here aren't exact numbers but uh, it's just to give you a rough idea of what types of blocks you will need you'll need solid blocks for building of course whatever you want the farm to be made out of you'll probably want some glass blocks in there uh, so you can see when it's time to harvest the farm I'm using jack-o'-lanterns for lighting but also because they don't actually stick to the honey blocks or slime blocks so those blocks would just slide right by so I can put them on the outside of the walls and light up the farm as well as it won't won't break the farm uh, same sort of situation with the oak leaves it, they just don't stick to the honey blocks and then we're going to be using those to sweep things off the tops of the machines whenever they fly by so uh, you know that could be glazed terracotta or obsidian same thing with the jack-o'-lanterns you just want something that's not going to stick uh, now for this uh, farm i'm going to be making my grow platform 8 by 16 so i'm going to need two stacks of the dripstone blocks as well as two stacks of the pointed dripstone if you choose to make it longer obviously you're going to need more of these materials or if you choose to make it shorter you won't need as much but you will also need a infinite water source so have at least two buckets of water and the area required for this build is going to be 11 blocks wide by 33 blocks long but uh you know as i said before this farm is actually expandable you can make it as long as you want or as short as you want uh so you know uh, accommodate for that space if you choose to change the size uh also it's only 11 blocks wide because i have the collection chest popping out this one side you know most of the farm fits within 10 blocks but let's go ahead and get started so coming to the side opposing where you want your collection chest to be we're going to come two blocks in from our corner and then we're going to place a block here well uh, that's going to be the corner of a rectangle that's going to be 10 blocks wide by 28 blocks long so go ahead and build that inside your build area and if you did that right your rectangle should look a little something like this you're coming two blocks from the end of your build area on one side one block on this other on this long side three blocks on the far side and then of course it's right up against our border of our bear build area on this side so next we want a 18 uh block platform in the middle of this thing so what we're going to do is we're going to count four blocks in from the end that's one two three 
four and then right next to that we'll we'll put just a line of blocks going all the way across do the same thing on the other end here we're going to count one four blocks in one two three four and then right next to that we're going to build another line of blocks and then everything in between those two lines go ahead and fill that in that's going to be the floor of your growing platform now after you've done that your build should look a little something like this we're going to go ahead and get our collection systems in place in order to do that we're going to come right up next to our big floor here in the middle and uh in you know just in one of these gaps we're going to dig a trench we're going to come one two three four five six seven eight nine we're gonna pop out on the other side here and just dig out those two blocks so that way we can place in our collection chests here like i said you could use a single chest for a collection you don't have to use double but uh, i'm gonna put a chain of hoppers feeding into the back of that chest right through that trench that i, that I just dug all the way to the other side and then of course you're going to go clear over onto the other side into this gap and you're going to do the same thing over here and now with our collection system in place we can go ahead and start building in our flying machine so uh we're, we're going to come to one side here whichever side you want them to launch from uh and we're going to count just three blocks in from one of these corners so go one two three right next to that we're gonna have a sticky piston facing in toward your farm now on the ground here inside your little uh pocket here if you whatever you want to call it you want to place two blocks right beside where you just place that sticky piston and then place another sticky piston on top of that facing the same direction now on top of this backmost sticky piston you're going to want a piece of obsidian another block on top of that doesn't matter what kind of block you use there but you do want another sticky piston on top of that block with another block of obsidian on top of that sticky piston now right beside this center block this kind of placeholder block you're going to want another block to place redstone on right next to that you're going to want a glass block or a slab something that won't that won't that can't be powered from redstone and then we're going to place in a temporary block just so we can place another sticky piston on top of that we'll break away that temporary block and you should have this structure right here and now we can start putting our flying machines in place and to do that we're going to start off with just a couple of temporary blocks we're going to come one block away from where this piston is on the ground and it'll, in this case it'll be on top of that hopper you want to place a temporary block there and then right next to this sticky piston on the ground you're going to want to place another temporary block there now on top of those temporary blocks you want to place observers with the redstone dot facing upwards uh, so we can go ahead and break away those temporary blocks once those observers are in place and then we need to get our honey blocks and build it we're going to build right off of this obsidian we're going to come two blocks in so it's right on the back of that observer and then we're going to want sticky pistons facing the same direction right on the side of those honey blocks we want two more honey blocks on the face of those sticky pistons and then we're going to turn around and have two more sticky pistons facing back the other direction you might actually have to break that honey block away to get this second one in place but then just make sure you replace that when you're done uh then we're going to go ahead and build this same machine one block up from that so we're going to place in our temporary blocks we go right here next to that sticky piston and then one one block away from that sticky piston so we can place our observers on top of those two temporaries go ahead and break away those temporaries that's very important uh then we need our honey blocks again we're going to come two blocks off the obsidian right beside the obsidian or right beside those honey blocks you want two sticky pistons two honey blocks on the face of those sticky pistons and here again you're going to turn around we'll go ahead and break that now and we'll have our two sticky pistons facing back that way make sure we replace that honey block and th th that's the flying machines pretty much already in place uh, of course we don't have any redstone to trigger it yet and it's probably a good idea to wait on that until we get our other machines or, or other, our other docks in place so to get those little return docks in place we're going to come to the side of our flying machines that have the uh, honey blocks and the observers exposed here you know not on this side but this side we're going to stay in this row of blocks and we're going to go clear to the other end of the build on this outside border we're going to have another sticky piston facing in towards the farm and just like we did on the other side we want to put two blocks on the ground right next to that with another sticky piston on on top of that last block next we want our obsidian on top of this sticky piston with a placeholder block on top of the obsidian another sticky piston on top of that placeholder block with another block of obsidian on top of that then right here next to our placeholder block we're going to need another solid block 
we want a glass block or a slab could be placed here and then just a temporary block to place in another sticky piston and make sure we get rid of that temporary block and that should be the return uh stations pretty much in place we just need to wire in some redstone so to do that we're going to start with our observers and we want them right next to these uh, obsidian blocks and we want the face facing in towards the farm redstone dot facing out the back here so we're going to place them in just like that now we need some blocks to place some redstone on so i'm going to just kind of pillar up here and we want to come three blocks off the back of that and then we want three blocks on the ground right next to those three we'll need two observers or i'm sorry two repeaters if i could pick that back up both set to four ticks Ooh, i don't want it there i want it there uh so you want to click them all the way to four ticks then we want to run a redstone line from those repeaters down and around into your pistons you have below just like that we're going to need the same structure up above so let's go ahead and stack up come three blocks out we want one two three four blocks underneath here because we got to run our redstone line around there here again we need two repeaters both set to four ticks and then a redstone line coming down around feeding into both of those pistons okay and now that that part of the build is in place or at least the obsidian blocks are in place and we know that our machines are not going to go flying off into the sunset we can go ahead and put in the redstone which will send those machines flying so let's go ahead and we're going to step down off this block right here so i'm going to place a temporary block just so i can step down and then i'm going to step down again to right here and then i want just a little well c well l-shaped structure down here on the ground we'll just place three blocks just like that and we're gonna go ahead and place our button on this block right here it could be on the side or on the outside it doesn't really matter basically you're sending the signal into this block here which is going to trigger the machines uh but next let's go ahead and run some redstone so i want to dash of dust there coming up here all the way across that glass block so it feeds into those two pistons and then this machine down here we want this to be just a little bit behind the top machine so we're going to throw in a couple repeaters here we'll place one there go ahead and set that to four ticks one there set to four ticks and oops not there <laughs> one there set to four ticks now coming out of that repeater we're going to need redstone dust again so we can feed that into both of those pistons but just in between these repeaters we can just place solid blocks just like that now with all that the redstone for our flying machines are in place and before we build any of the rest of the farm it's probably a good idea to test those out so i'm going to go ahead and hit that button first machine takes off first it's got a, just a little bit of a lead on the bottom one And as you can see, they both hit the return stations and started to make their way back just fine. Okay, and now that we know that our flying machines are completely functional, we just have a couple more touches to put on them before we can start building the rest of the structure. Uh, first thing is we're going to need to get some water into these collection areas. See, some of the dripstone is going to come out over the hoppers and land over here in the grass. So what we want is some water streams pushing them back into the hoppers. But before we put those in place, uh, we're going to temporarily remove this block right here on top of that observer simply because well that's going to cause problems and same thing over here on top of this observer we're going to go ahead and remove that block now we can just place water buckets in the cor each corner of this little collection pocket and now that that's done with we can go ahead and place our honey blocks back in now we'll come over to the other side and we don't have to remove anything here because there's no flying machine here we can just place our water buckets in these corners this way anything that does pop out over that hopper chain is just going to get pushed back into the hopper chain and the other little touch we're going to put on the flying machine aspect of it all is the sweeper arms of course we're going to need to make these a little bit wider so uh, we're going to do the sweeper arms on each machine just a little bit differently than the other uh, but most importantly we're building off the same block so it's not the frontmost block i guess you could if you wanted but it makes most sense to have it on this block here we're going to just bring three honey blocks off the end of that and on the bottom of those honey blocks we just want any type of block i'm going to use glass blocks but you could use any solid block you want but this is just going to act as a sweeper anything that lands on the ground is going to get 
pushed off the other side by those blocks. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. Uh, just right above our observer here, we want three blocks coming off. So you can see they're not exactly on the same row of blocks. They're off just a little bit. Uh, and then three more blocks underneath those honey blocks. Now that's the bottom machine done. Top machine is even simpler because we don't need a full sweeper arm. We only need a uh, sweeper arm across the top of it. So we just need to come two honey blocks off. And then you can put any block you want on the outside of that. Here again, I'm going to use glass, but it could be you know a solid block uh you it could be if you choose to use more honey blocks of course you're going to have to make preparations on the outside of the farm as well which you know that that's the purpose of the pumpkins there or the jack-o-lanterns um but that should be the machines already in place if be, if you choose to before you start building it's always a good idea to make sure you haven't placed anything incorrectly and your machines are still working Okay, redstone aspect of it done. Now we just need to build the farm. So on the each corner of these uh, of this big growing floor you got here, uh, you want to place just a solid block with a jack o' lantern on top of that. Uh, like I said, you could use like a glazed terracotta here or obsidian or crying obsidian if you want. Basically anything that's not gonna stick to those honey blocks. I just wanted something that's going to light up the farm which is why i'm using jack lanterns but make sure you build that sort of structure on all four of these corners and then from here you want just six blocks uh on top of each of those so we'll go one two three four five six and do the same thing on all four of those corners and once you've done that, your farm should look a little something like this. So what we want to do now is just run beams going across uh, from pillar to pillar on all four sides of this thing. So just like that, go the whole way around the top of the outside of this farm. Okay, now we can start getting our dripstone in place as long as you got this frame all lined up and completely filled. Uh, so what we want to do is come one block below the frame. So I'm going to just place a temporary block there so I can get a piece of dripstone in the corner here. I'm going to come all the way across and then all the way down, basically filling in this entire rectangle. And once you've done that, it should look a little something like this. So now we need water sources in on this and on top of this entire thing. So the best way to fill that in, well, with a water bucket, you would just go across one side or water buckets and then across another side. And that should fill in the whole farm. If you got ice or something, you could just make diagonal lines across it. But uh, the point is, make sure they're all water source blocks on top of here. And then come down underneath, and you're going to start placing your pointed dripstone on each one of those blocks. And you're going to want to fill up this entire platform with these pointed dripstone. And with that part done, it should look a little something like this. And at this point, you do have a fully functioning dripstone farm. These things will start growing. The only thing is we're going to want to close this in a little bit so that way things aren't being pushed out of the farm. So this row right here where you have your jack-o'-lanterns on, I tend to just run jack-o'-lanterns the whole way across this thing. You don't have to do that. You could use glazed terracotta. You could use obsidian or crying obsidian. Uh, but the idea is something that's not going to stick to the honey blocks. You could use leaf blocks for this, which I'm going to use leaf blocks on the ends of this to uh, sweep things off of our machines. But for now, I'm just putting those uh, here on the sidewalls. And then all of the rest of these sidewalls can be filled in with just glass blocks. And with our walls complete, the last thing we need to do is put in our sweepers. You know, every now and again, uh, some things are going to land on top of the machines and kind of get stuck. So we want um, leaf blocks, or this could be glazed terracotta, or even more jack-o'-lanterns, if that's what you want to use. Uh, we're going to build little sweeping bars to wipe these things off of our flying machines. So you're going to come right on the same line of blocks that your pointed dripstone is on. And just build a line of leaves across that. Next, we're going to come down to where one block above where our jack-o'-lanterns are. We're going to build another line of leaf blocks across that. Now, right here beside your machine, you're going to notice you got three blocks on this end and then three blocks on this end where there's a gap. We're going to fill those gaps in with leaf blocks. So go one, two, three, 
one two three and then you want to build those same sweeping bars on the other side so we're going to come over to this side we're going to go all the way across the top just like that we're going to come one block above the jack-o'-lanterns here we're going to go all the way across three blocks on the outside here three blocks on the outside here and with that our build is completely done so as you can see there's already a few dripstone growing in there you know this stuff grows slowly but with great big fields of it like this if you let this thing fill up it it will it will fill up your chest pretty quickly so um let's go ahead and harvest this see what we can get out of our first little harvest which isn't going to be much but you can see it seems to be working just fine it's pushing these little dripstone across the floor here those are going to fall down into our little collection systems and that will come into our chest and yeah like i said we're not getting a lot on the on the first harvest here basically you want to let this thing fill up it will get to the point where you can't even walk inside this farm that's when you want to harvest because you get you get several stacks of the pointed dripstone so if you're looking for a lot of this stuff this is definitely the way to farm it and so my friends that completes today's tutorial and as always i want to thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this video please remember to hit that like button and if you're interested in seeing more from me consider subscribing as well and i wanted to wish you all a wonderful day